Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Christian Minute podcast. My name is Anne Markey, and today I'm here with Natalie, and we're going to be talking about boundaries. But before we jump in, thank you so much for joining me. How's it going? Good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited to have this conversation because I think it's, um, even though there's like lots of books out there about boundaries. I feel like it's not really a conversation that people have a lot. Um, But before we even get into all that, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thank you. So my name is Natalie Souders, and I've actually worked at a Christian-based counseling center for the past 10 years. Um, I'm an LICSW, so that, you know, my degree is in social work, as are most of the people who work at our facility. And we're counselors just like any other counselor. So we definitely work with people who have no Christian beliefs whatsoever. But some people do specifically come to our facility because they say, hey, I'm a Christian and I'm struggling with my mental health. I would like to see how the two are integrated. So um, I get the privilege of doing that. And I really enjoy that. And I um, also published a book called Dear Mama that is for women with postpartum depression and anxiety. And that helps women bond with their babies. So that's another little avenue I do, but it's all under the umbrella of mental health. Totally. As you're saying that, I'm like, oh, man, that sounds like that could have helped me because that's exactly right. Uh, yeah. Right. Another great conversation to have as, as a Christian woman, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I before we start the taping this interview, we're talking about some boundaries. And I was sharing how I think for a really long time when I was thinking of boundaries, it was like boundaries and friendship or like physical boundaries to create. But how as I've gotten older, it's been more about like building mental boundaries Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and just that that kind of surprised me. Like, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out like, oh, I can I can just like decide not to think about that or I can decide to like not go down this particular rabbit trail because I know it's going to lead somewhere that's not healthy for my mental health. Yeah. So boundaries in particular are limits that we put or guidelines that we put on our lives. And they might be physical, but they could also be emotional or social or psychological. So boundaries definitely come in many different forms. And it's really like the limits that we need to put to protect our own mental health. So really, the first step would be to have some type of self-awareness. You know, that, that's kind of the hard part, I think, is sometimes people honestly don't know. So you have to take a few minutes and really just look at yourself and say, well, what is it I need? Where do I need to set a boundary? Because people don't instinctively know, and the boundaries are so individualized that we have to determine them for ourselves before we can even begin to set them and share them with others. Totally. And I think that's part of the issue that I'm starting to realize about, it was only really a couple of years ago that I realized I had ADHD. And one of the um, challenges that I've had in like the workplace and relationships and a bunch of different areas was I didn't realize I could ask questions. Right. But also like, okay, now I know what I can ask questions, but what questions do I ask? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So maybe you can give us some examples of just like some of the questions that women can ask ourselves to realize like what are some boundaries I can actually set and what are some things that I can think about that are that's going to help me get there. So it's really important that a boundary is concrete and measurable. So sometimes, and I've been really guilty of this, I've told my husband, I need a break. I need a break. Well, what does that mean? Like he has no idea what that means. And so sometimes then he will say, okay, and he will attempt to do something. And I'm like, well, that's not what I mean. And he's like, well, how am I supposed to know what you mean? And um, not all that long ago, he essentially called me out on it very respectfully. But he was like, you're not asking to go do something. And I'm saying no. Like, I, I don't know, you know. And I was like, you're right. You're right. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't say like, so I was like, here's what I'm going to do. And I think he got a little scared. And I was like, I'm actually going to leave this house. I'm going to leave this house for a couple of days. And that is what a break's going to look like. And he was very supportive. But, you know, that was on me because I had kept getting frustrated and I wasn't setting a boundary. And that's not his job. So sometimes for Christian women, we have to really sit there. You know, we love to do it all. I love to do it all. Right. I've got three kids. I've got a husband. I love my family. 
And sometimes the boundary, I've got to cut myself off and say, okay, what it's going to look like is me letting go. And I am not going to do all these things. And I'm going to actually just have to physically separate myself. So that's where the boundary does become physical. For me, I got to step away because if I'm in this house, I'm doing. So I've got to physically separate it and set a boundary. And most people in our lives, hopefully the people who love us, want to support that. Like they want us to be happy. So it's kind of a matter of teaching them what we need. Okay. So with your husband, like how did you start that conversation? So um, I'm a really visual person. And are you familiar with the book, The Giving Tree? Yes. So The Giving Tree is an interesting book. And I use that a lot in therapy because it's often marketed to moms on Mother's Day. You're going to see this book everywhere. You give it to mom. And if you read that book, at the end, the tree cuts itself down to a stump. Hmm. And the kid is still not really happy. Wow. And it's, you know, I, I use this book and I'll ask people when I read it, I'm like, where did the tree go wrong? Where should the tree have set a boundary? You know, where it could have continued to thrive and the kid could have thrived, but nobody had to totally sacrifice themselves for anyone else's happiness. And it's a great conversation. I get some of the most beautiful answers. Um, but when we look at it, in the terms of like, wait a minute, nowhere are we asked to cut ourselves down to a stump. Like that is not biblical and it's most definitely, you know, not healthy for us. Because at that point, what are you going to do? You're no good to anyone, including yourself. Totally. And I think too, having this discussion and saying like, your boundaries are going to look different than mine. I have different capacities. And so I think as women, we compare a lot and say, oh, but she's doing X, Y, Z, and I can't even do ABC kind of thing. Um, and then the guilt just comes. So mm -hmm. maybe you can talk a little bit about like, you know, maybe we know we want boundaries, but then we feel guilty expressing it. Can you talk a little bit about that? So, you, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head is that that is always the challenge. I think sometimes we really want to start telling other people like this is what you need to do that you, know, you need to change this or but we really have to look inside of ourselves and say, OK, what is going on here? Often it's a piece of control. Right. I, you know, my kids are little. I love controlling their world. Right. I love taking them to their events and being all a part of that. And so at some point. Right. We have to say, OK, which what can I let go here? Um, we really have to also boundary. This is another kind of boundary. If you know something is particularly triggering to you to see, like maybe you're someone who can't handle seeing the perfect Instagram feeds, or maybe, you know, you cannot handle looking at Pinterest without feeling guilt, then you have to set that boundary for your own emotional health. And if that's just an area you struggle. So it's really kind of recognizing the things that trigger us whatever that might be. And then I'd also just really encourage you to be authentic because I guarantee the people that you think have the perfect mom life um, do not. So kind of being authentic for yourself and saying, you know what? I really tried to make this perfect Pinterest Valentine and it was a total disaster. It didn't work out. And I guarantee you that there's other women in your life who would have been in the same boat. Yeah, I love that you said, I want to repeat this because this is so important that like, if you're doing something that is just increasing your guilt, mm -hmm. <laughs> that that is something that really we should consider completely cutting out because mm -hmm. I think we just think like, oh, well, Facebook is good and Pinterest is good and I like it. But if it's creating all this extra anxiety, then it really isn't good because it is like stealing our joy or like stealing our, we just start playing the comparison game. And I know for myself, I had to stop watching the news because mm. it was just like so depressing and it was making me feel more anxious about my kids and raising them in this type of world. And so now I know what the news is. Like I know what's happening, but I don't read a lot of the articles. I don't look at the pictures. I don't, I have to really be careful as to what I read and watch about those sorts of things because then it is triggering. And then I, it starts this loop of like, Oh no, you know? Um, but it kind of took me probably like a little bit longer than it should to start cutting that out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause we don't even always recognize like, so a boundary I set for myself is I never use a filter unless it's like a filter. It looks like a dog or something, but these like glamor photos or whatever, for me personally, I don't even go there. 
because yeah. I guarantee the filter is going to look better than what I do. So then I, I don't even want to put those images in my head as like a goal to obtain. So for me, it's just like a hard pass. I'm like, nope, I never ever post. I never even take a filtered photo because it's not good for me. So I don't do it. And other people, they can take filtered photos all day and it doesn't affect their self-esteem. So have at it, right? It's kind of that self-awareness piece. Yeah, I, I love that example because I think it's the more examples we could give, I think the more it helps people realize which specific areas they're actually allowed to build boundaries. And mm -hmm. I think certainly as Christian women, and I'm, you know, I, I think I probably speak for most women, <laughs> we're very service-based. And yeah. so when we're thinking like, oh no, but this helps me do this and it helps me do this and it helps me do this, we kind of feel like we can't say no, we can't build boundaries because then we feel like, oh, but we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and so just say like, even Jesus, he created boundaries. He rested, he walked away. He only had a certain amount of disciples and he was perfect. So, right. <laughs> you know, if he, if he can create boundaries, so can we. Right. I think Jesus very much models boundaries. I, sometimes I'll ask when I speak to Christian women, do you ever wonder why Jesus didn't just sit there doing miracles and, uh, you know, healing 24 seven? Like why? did he take rest for himself? Why did he go off by himself? And that really drove me because I, I'm not someone who really valued going off by myself. I'm like, ah, but I could do something with my family or my husband. And it's really a reminder, Jesus went off by himself. Therefore, that's a great model for me to follow that I need time just by myself. And it was honestly, it was a great, it was a great experience. I mean, I prayed, read my Bible, um, did some writing, some blog posts. Like it was a wonderful experience. And it was just one of those things that I had to like force myself to do it. It wasn't natural for me to do it because there's always a to-do list that's never done. You know, we love to make lists. I do that sometimes, but it's never actually complete folks. Like, so, you know, you have to get really comfortable leaving it undone. It's not easy. So yeah, but Jesus definitely was uh, fantastic at modeling boundaries and I think that, you know, we see that we see Jesus show such a wide range of emotions. He was yes. extremely distressed at times. You know, he, he definitely he showed sadness. He shows all these different emotions that I think are important to normalize as well. Like he wasn't happy 24 seven either. And I love that you said either. that. I've actually I mean, I mean, I knew that Jesus is expressed emotion, but. I think the way you framed it was this like, it's okay. And I, I, I tell myself that all the time. Cause I'm like, I mean, you read the Psalms and it's like, David went through these huge emotions of like intense joy and then like very deep depression. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet God calls him as a man after his own heart. And so, you know, I always try to compare myself to biblical characters and I feel like sometimes I fall short, but then it's like when I start looking at their weaknesses, I realize like, oh, they weren't perfect. And God still called them righteous. Um, right. And so like that's sometimes hard for me to wrap my head around, but it does help me feel like I'm not always failing. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I'm i with you there. I think that um, sometimes I will ask people, particularly mothers, when they're struggling and I'll say, well, could you tell me what it is to be a great mom? there's not a list right so i'd like you to just tell me because we say these open-ended terms that are not measurable so that's kind of a good range of thumb if you are using some open-ended thing um this is for goals that you make for yourself or things that you hold yourself to if we use words like i, I want to be really good at this or i want to do such and such more like what does that mean you know, I want to play with my kids more. I want to be more patient. Like what? That's not measurable. So you really want to kind of have some type of uh, give yourself a chance to meet the goal and right. say, OK, you know what? I know that Sunday mornings are stressful. I'm going to really make an effort to stay calm and patient getting out the door Sunday morning. Like that's a goal, you know, because okay. it's measurable here. But if we just say I want to be more patient, well, what does that mean? And that's open ended. And guess what? You're totally going to fail one of these days. So like, let's just keep that real. So you just want to have something measurable. You got to kind of boundary yourself with that. OK. And then we do boundary other people. Right. We we do. I mean, I set boundaries with my husband. I set boundaries with my children. Um, 
I will definitely tell my children at times, like, here's what's going to happen. For the next however many minutes, no one is going to come talk to me. I'm going to go up in my room and just have some quiet time. And you may not knock on the door. It's teaching them how to respect me, right? It's teaching them also that that is okay for them to do. Like we're modeling the behavior. And one of my children is great. She will say, I'm having alone time and shut her door and just play with Legos by herself. And I'm like, fantastic. You know, you know how many years took me to know to do that? Like and my little kid does it. So it is okay for us to set boundaries with our children and say, I am not available as mom 24 seven. I have many things. And for this next 20 minutes, I am not mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think too, part of that is having that discussion with your spouse too, because Mm -hmm. what I found is ever since my oldest was born, um, like I have a sleep in day cause I love sleeping in. Like I could sleep on really long. Um, and so we just decided early on about having kids that I would sleep in on Saturdays and then he could sleep in on Sundays. And we've been doing this now for almost 14 years, but a lot of the times what would happen is on the Saturday, you know, it's my sleep in day. And then the kids are coming in two, three, four times. Mm-hmm. And so finally just like talking to my husband and saying, I really appreciate that I can have the sleep in time, but it's not helpful when the kids are coming in three, four, three, you know, and he's like, Oh, well, I didn't even see them go into the room or I didn't see them do this. And so for me, it's always about, okay, I'm happy to build this boundary, but sometimes that conversation has to start also with our spouse and say, okay, how can we, how can you support me so that I can have this time to myself Um, Mm -hmm. And then hopefully that can be agreed upon so that when it is time for you to actually have that alone time, you don't get disrupted. Because I know if I told my kids, like, give me 20 minutes, like they could not do that. I need my partner to step in and help them not come to me for 20 minutes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I'd say my husband definitely struggles to um, support that when I'm at the house. I think he actually prefers that I go. Because he's like, oh, you know, and then he doesn't because they will definitely be right beside him and still be calling upstairs for me when he's like right there. And that's not yeah. him. You know, that's that's them just instinctively doing that for sure. Um, and I, you're right about having the conversation with your husband. And I, I certainly had to do that. Like, I will tell him um, and he's pretty respectful about saying, hey, I'd like to do such and such this evening. Will that work? But I definitely had to be like, listen, this entire week. There's just too much going on. I am not available to watch children after regular work hours this week. So don't even bring anything up. I'm not available. You do not have childcare. And I mean, he respects that because I do what I can. I think that a big thing that women can kind of look for, are you familiar with love languages at all? Yes. Yeah. Time touch. Yeah. Okay. So we have time touch gifts, acts of service, um, Skipped one time to words of affirmation. Yeah, words of affirmation. So sometimes what happens is our love language is an area that we um, get depleted. Mm-hmm. So I'm an active service person. So that means I will sign up for team mom. I will be the first to volunteer in preschool. I will agree to help my friends out. I will do whatever I can to cover for my husband. You know, I, I'm the therapist. So I'll take clients, more clients on that week than I should. You know, anything that I can do as an active service, sometimes I do. And that's where I have to keep myself under control because I don't want to resent that. That's a beautiful thing. That's who I am. And I do have to say, okay, I'm maxed out on my acts of service right now. And it's not going to be good for me to take on another one. Yeah. And I I think that's such a good example because I think as Christians, and I've said this before, but like, we always feel like we have to say yes when somebody asks us to do something, certainly when it's related to the church. Yeah. And I think we have a hard time saying no, because it's like, I want to serve in the church. I want to do these things. Um, But I know for me, it's this realization that it's like, you know what, that doesn't actually help me. And I can say no. And so I know for me, um, I haven't done any nursery services because I was holding babies every day, all day. And Mm -hmm. 
Sunday morning was like the only time that I was not holding a baby. So my husband volunteered for nursery, but I didn't. And I'm sure some moms would have been like totally weirded out, but I needed that time to not do that. And then even now, I still say no to nursery because I'm still recovering from those early years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just, I can't right now. And maybe one day I will, but just having this realization, like, no, actually, if I do that, I'm going to resent the church or my babies or my service. Mm -hmm. um, and then not feeling guilty for saying no, but then also at the same time thinking about, well, what can, like, what can I do that will give me life? that will help me have a right. better relationship with the Lord and feeling, you know, useful in multiple areas. Yeah. That, you, you know, you said several things that I really liked and for the sake of this podcast, it's great to be willing to share and explain yourself. But I do want to remind Christian women, we are not obligated to explain our boundaries. Yeah. I think that's really important. You know, Jesus, when he took a break or, you know, he, he there's not this like lengthy explanation. <laughs> you know, and I think that we sometimes like you are who you are. If you believe that you were created, right? If we believe you have a divine creator. You were made individual and very different from everybody else. What works for you, what your needs are, are not going to look the same. And so sometimes we do get in the position of saying, hey, this is why I'm not working in nursery. Da, 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 da. You're not under the obligation to do that, because what that does is sort of open up ourselves to judgment. This is where we this is a boundary to set is stop explaining ourselves. You can hmm. say things, you know, we want to look for what we would say assertive communication and assertive communication is very minimal, not aggressive communication. Sometimes people confuse the two, right? We've got passive, which is where we kind of get mowed over and we never stand up for ourselves. We have aggressive or sometimes we swing to when we've been too passive and assertive is a great boundary. So we can just say really concise I statements like I am not available. Or you could say that won't work for me. Or you could just say no. Without the explanation, that is a boundary. It is, you know, you you could say sometimes people say I've got too much on my plate. And they could come back and sometimes people do push back on our boundaries. That will happen. I'm not telling you if you set a boundary, everybody's going to immediately accept that, especially if you've always been the person who didn't have boundaries. We're going to have to teach people how to treat us. And that is hard. The first time you set boundaries might be like, I'm not available. What do you mean you're right. not available? You always do it. You do it every year. Yeah, but I'm not available, right? You just got to keep sticking with that. There, don't get sucked into a lengthy explanation of, well, my kids have this and I, I'm burnt out and I've got a lot going on at work. Nope. We stick to our boundary. I'm not available. And it'll get easier, right? Someone told, told me before how good I was at setting boundaries. I was like, I definitely used to not be, right? I mean, I would take on way too much and wonder why I'm yelling at everybody because I'm fried. And that was my fault. That was my fault. So I've kind of reclaimed that. And I, I'm really good at setting boundaries now, but it's not going to naturally come super easy. If you say, well, I could never say it like she does. I didn't always say it this way either, but you want to just set those boundaries. And then it's really important to kind of stick with them. Now, when we teach people how to treat us, sometimes they'll get confused and they might say, you know, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. It's okay to kind of lump in the term boundaries. This should be really all the time a word that we're using, just kind of vernacular. Well, I'm learning to set better boundaries to protect my mental health. Like that's and, legit. Right. And so have you like you've used that phrase? Yes. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, you know, you want to use it. I mean, you can really use it with anybody, but hopefully the people in your world are safe. And so this is, right. you know, we say, what do you do if someone doesn't respect your boundaries? Um, cause that's really important and that's totally going to happen. That's totally going to happen at work. It's totally going to happen. So it's important to, sometimes we do have flexible boundaries where, Hey, you know, you know, somebody got sick and we're going to cover for them. We're going to help out this week. Um, you know, you don't want to have basically permeable, permeable boundaries, which are just almost like pointless. People just shove them wherever they want to shove them. But when someone does kind of push back, you, you can kind of, use that and just say, I'm trying to really work on my mental health. I need to set some healthy boundaries for me. And other times somebody will just keep pushing back. And then that might be a time where you want to set a boundary with that person. Like, is this person someone you need in your everyday life? Is this somebody, you know, you can take some physical distance from like that does happen. That absolutely does happen where you have to say, you know what, 
you are not healthy to have in my life on a daily basis. You're not respecting my boundaries. So you know what? It's, I, I can't hang out with you every week. Right. I think so. In, in our whole conversation, we, you've talked about, we shared some of these things, but I want to ask the question specifically so women know. It's like flags that we should look for that tell us that we need to start building boundaries around certain areas. Yeah. So I would say um, one flag that's really important to look for is when you are acting in a way that you know doesn't make sense. Right. If you walk in and flip out that there's dishes, but there's dishes every day, what is the deal? Well, you probably have more on your plate than what you can handle. And so then we kind of want to trace it back. Sometimes I'll use like a scaling question. Well, scale one to 10, how's my life today? If I say it's at a four, okay, well, what can happen to make it just like a six, like a little better? And it'd be like, man, if I didn't have to do such and such. Okay, then we say, well, do I really have to do that? Like sometimes we put things, you know, Easter's coming. Um, every time there's a holiday, right? There's always things on a mom's to-do list. What can we cut out? Like, what do we want to do? And that's a really important line about saying what I want to do versus what do I have to do versus what I don't have to do. And so you can kind of cut things out. So a red, first red flag would be our emotional behavior. How are we feeling and acting? And then another red flag would be kind of, you know, you want to gauge like what the things that you're doing and how you feel when you're doing those things. When I volunteer my son's preschool, I love it. I love yeah. it. It's great to be around those little kids. They think I'm great. I think they're hilarious. You know, it's, it's, so that's something that should stay in my world. Yeah. If I am volunteering at some place that I just dread it and it's a miserable experience, then I might have to say, okay, I need to cut this particular ministry back. Not all ministries are for all people, you know? So if you're a door greeter and just truly don't like it, then why are you doing it? Maybe you can serve in another capacity. Yeah. So those are, those are some things. And then, you know, for people, and it is possible that the people in your life will not accept these boundaries. There are some people, maybe it's a boss, maybe it's whoever, um, a friend, it could be a family member who you have set a firm boundary. Please do not, you know, talk to me about the condition of my home. Right. I do not want to have that discussion. And they come in and do it again. Well, it's okay to tell them, listen, I'm setting a boundary. If you keep doing this, you can't come over. It stresses me out, makes me feel bad. I don't want to discuss this with you. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay to like lay it out very black and white because we want to give them a chance, right? We want to give them a chance to respect our boundary. If they don't, then it's absolutely acceptable to distance ourselves from them. You can unfriend them on Facebook, right? You can unfollow them on Instagram. You know, that is not the ultimate insult people think it is. It is okay to set a boundary like that so that you can maintain a real relationship with that person. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those kind of things for sure, you, you just, it is hard though. And that is the work on us. You might want to practice in the mirror sometimes before you do this. <laughs> well, thanks for joining. But before we end, maybe you can share just like if people want to get to know you more or connect with you where they can find you. Yeah. So I am on Instagram um, at Natalie Souders underscore. And then I have at Dear Mama Books, which tells you a little bit more about my book and about um, postpartum depression and kind of mom life. But you can definitely find me there and um, I would love to connect with you. I definitely have a lot of Christian um, information. I feel like I like to put mental health things and associate them with where I found them in scripture or where I connected with them. But I encourage you to do that as well on your own, for sure. I mean, just see what the Lord's teaching you about your own mental health through his word. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me and having this conversation. I really appreciated it. You're welcome. You have a good day. Okay, thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining, and I'll see you in the next episode.